Welcome everybody uh, to uh, Voices of Vermont. It's a new project, a journalistic project that is being carried by a news cooperative. You know, a news co-op that uh, from now on will review what makes the news in our city, Burlington, but also uh, across uh, the state of Vermont and the nation. Today uh, we have on the set- And the world. And the world, yeah, of course. We have uh, with us members of this co-op, uh, Steve Goodkind, Sandy Baird, and a special guest today, Ali Jeng, who is a city councillor, who is here. And then we'll start right away with uh, Ali, and then because uh, we're going to talk about the new uh, BTV neighborhood code, which is which has been approved recently anonymously by uh, the city council and which aim to uh, improve uh, the uh, lodging and uh, situation in Vermont. So to start with it, how, what, what, what is it exactly? Yeah, yeah. Thank you uh, for having me. And uh, neighborhood code is something that people have been waiting for a very, very long time. And it is simply about changing the zoning uh, in the neighborhoods around the city in order to allow people to be able to build more. So we did it in three different phases, right? The phase one is about if you have a high density, if you're allowed to have a high density, you are allowed to have 45% of your lot can be transported into housing, right? And those housing can go from <coughs> four to six units. If you are medium, it will be about 32% of your lot can be transformed into housing. And um, if you are low density, it will be around 23%. So now it is just allowing people to be able to change, to go higher, and also to utilize their lots in order to build more housing. So I think in a nutshell, that's what neighborhood is, did, is about. Did they change any of the density areas or just what's allowed within the current densities? Yeah, so thank you, I think that's a good question. So all the densities have changed, but I think in one point where it is in Ward 6, that's only part where we have uh, low density, you know, um, in order for it to go up, right? Uh, but I think as part of that, the rest of the city, you know, everywhere, especially the old North End, it will be all medium to high but also major arteries in the city, such as North Avenue, you know, Eaton Island Parkway, not Eaton Island Parkway, but um, Colchester Avenue, all those will be like high density in order for those buildings to go higher and up, right? So I think the city councils also for the sake of, let's say, um, equity, they brought a lot of amendments. Some of them were to carve out some neighborhoods in order for them to not be in the medium density, such as Mansfield Avenue, mm. um, you know, on Ward 1 and Ward 8, and also other people tried extensively in order for the, mid, the, the zoning to be applied to everywhere in part of the city, such as in the Ward 6, Ward 5, New North, and to ensure some level of, um, um, of equity. But some of those amendments passed, but some of them did not pass. But at the end of the day, the Burlington City Council voted unanimously uh, to move it forward. And I think we need to give the mayor a little bit of credit because he <coughs> did propose this as part of his 21 plan in order to build more housing in the city of Burlington. And he has done it while he was stepping out to not become the mayor anymore. Yeah. So you, you saw, said there was some exemption or not for Ward 1 and 8? No, no. Yeah, basically, um, yeah, yes, there is at least one neighborhood, one specific neighborhood very close to UVM. Right. To UVM MC that was carved out to become only, let's say, low density, right? Because they, they were scared. One, their lot was not big. And two, since it's very close to the UVM MC, then the developers will come buy those for millions of dollars in order to build it like in high density. So in, now the, the, the feel of a neighborhood will then disappear, right? And I think the, the, the people, the residents who are in that area were really scared. And I think the city council, I think on a vote of uh, seven to five, it, it passed. It passed. So I was included in the final. Exactly. It was? My neighborhood was included? No, it's, it was not. Your neighborhood was included, but there was just one specific street, uh. right? Um, East Avenue, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, East Avenue, that, that mm -hmm. area. 
to stay in low density. You still can build, but you cannot build very, very, very high up. So I can put an extension on my house now? Of course, and also you'll be able to rent it. And I think if you if you marry that with what, what the intensive that now the, the state of Vermont has, I think everyone, it will be a win-win situation. You can stay in your house, um, retire in your house, provide housing, and in order to leverage also funding from the state of Vermont to be able to do so. They have a very good program that will allow you to take up to $50,000, right, to remodel or add a unit in your house, and but you will only be able to rent that house for $1,000 for a certain amount of time. So I think it's a win-win situation, and Burlington made it now um, happen for the city of Burlington. Okay. We, we hope to be joined by uh, uh, um, a guest from Ivory Coast. All cities around the world are uh, you know, facing this problem. Abidjan, where I grew up also, is going towards like vertically you know, uh, growing. Um, is Burlington really ready to, to do that? I was talking to <coughs> Steve Goodkind last time. We, 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 talk ab we talked about you know, suing, you know, uh, 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 suing, uh, uh, Sir capacity. Uh, yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, underwater. Um, you know the infrastructure, the underwater. You know all all of it. But I think you know we have to think about this in a very incremental way. This is a zoning change that just happened. But I think anyone who would like to build, you have to go through the process. You have to go to DRB, right? You have to be approved by the Every, city council. Everyone? You, everyone. You cannot just come and build. I think there are the permits. The, yes. That, yeah, you, you get all the city permits, and if, if, if you, you know, you also pay into the inclusionary zoning, I think there are a lot of other steps, right, in order for someone to transform a lot into more housing. Yeah. I'm not sure what people are, how much they're aware of it, but our sewer capacity is not, we don't have much reserve. I'm surprised even that the project proposed for down in the south end, that we have the capacity for that. Mm former private works director, I know we are always sort of on the edge. We've got to make a major investment in wastewater for this to be accommodated. Uh, yes, yes. And I think for major development, you are completely right. There are some concerns, and I think um, how do we tie it into our efforts of just being climate, you know, resilient as well, right? Because there is, we don't want also the health of our lake to be undermined by this mm -hmm. zoning, right? But eventually, if we don't do it right, that may happen. But I am confident that the, the city of Burlington will look this into very close proximity in order for us to do it right. But now we just allow the zoning change and then let's see what's next. Did they talk at all about the tax implications if someone now is on a property, let's say it was a low density and now it's a medium density, that property is now worth more. Will people be taxed based on that worth even if they don't develop or will that just be helpful? No, no, I mean I think you know as since we did um, um, how do you call it, we reassess, reappraisal, re re since we did the reappraisal every lot will not change, right? things will change, but things will not change but now if you apply for a permit and receive a permit and build that's, I think it's then different. exactly where your... But people your, won't be charged or won't be appraised based on the potential use of their property, it'll be with the actual use, you think? Uh, I think I think it's just that if, if we, when an appraisal is taking place, whatever, it, it, they will not base it on the application you have moving forward, right? If you submitted an application, I think, I don't think that they will be able to base your, the, 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 the value of your property because you submitted an application. It will be just based on the status of that lot, that's when they will appraise that value and then in order to tax you appropriately, right? I think it's it's the case. But eventually, if you build, if you increase your density, therefore, you will have um, then of course more to pay for taxes. Yeah. Yeah. I think we uh, went through uh, the subject <laughs> very yeah. well. It's, 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 some, it's, it's, it's the story, you know, that is continuing. So yes. anyway, we'll see how, uh, how exactly. it ends up. But uh, uh, we have to remember that it was passed. This initiative serves as a response mm -hmm. to a problem. And what, in was, what, what problem? was the real problem? What was the mm -hmm. problem? Yeah, the lack of housing, yeah, right? That's what I, figured. I think it's one. But I think also one element about this is we will be changing an administration very soon. And the current. Monday. 
Monday, yep, and also the former sent a letter to the full city council asking people to vote on it. She will inherit it, she will be inheriting this and in order to move it forward. But I think also her partner is the one who is managing the water um, division Correct. of the city of Burlington. Correct. So I think there has been some substantial amount of research and this is a good thing and we will continue to do it. And I urge you to maybe, you know, identify one hour in the future mm -hmm. and just talk about this yeah. because it's a lot there's a lot of ins and out yeah 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 <laughs> we, we're planning to do that but okay. we wanted to you know at least to bring uh, to our audience you know what made news this week in uh, the queen city uh, another news that you know concerns you uh, ali is uh, the fact that you know the city council also the same way everybody together you know uh, uh, accepted that sister city project with ts yeah. in senegal could you uh, talk about this project? absolutely and i think there were actually two different sister cities that were approved one was in one city in ukraine that i cannot say the name is very uh, and also the 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 chess east and you, as you know, you all were aware that since last year, I have been trying to build the bridge between the two communities and visited Senegal last year um, and all paid for by the city of Burlington in order to go to Chesis and talk about the opportunity, the potential of building a sister city between the two municipalities. And some of you may know also that's where exactly that I, where, I, where, I, where, I, where I grew up in Chess. I went to the same school middle school with the current mayor. We did not know until we were talking about the possibility of building this and he was like, I think we, were, we did middle school together. I'm like, oh, I didn't remember. He's like, yes, you were in A and I was in B. Okay, then I think a couple friends connected us to say, yes, you were all at the same time. Um, you know, and I think also one thing to highlight about why this is so important is the city of Burlington has never had any sister city with any other countries in Africa. Right. This is the first time that it is happening and it is with Chesis. Another element is also the Vermont National Guard has established a military partnership with the state of Senegal since 2008. A strong partnership. The guards here know it very well. The presidents of the past two presidents of the Senegalese country were here in 2008 and also in 2014. Both Abdullahi Wad and Macky Sall were here. You know, all the time you see guard members going to Senegal, you see also Senegalese military personnel coming here, right? In August, a couple of people were here. Um, and I think this is, this is very good. Now, the sister city is based on four different areas. One of them is about culture, exchange, cultural exchange. Two is about education, right? Three is about health, right? And, and four is about the environment. I think Burlington is leading, let's say, the country around climate change mitigation, and I think there are opportunities for them to support the municipality of Chess in order to you know, be climate resilient and also to bring our people together. Because we just need peace and, and love and prosperity, and I'm glad that you know, with all of your support that we were able to make this happen, but the City Council voted unanimously to support it. Uh, could I say, uh, maybe ask you a question also? I see I was a founding member of our sister city in Palestine and Israel in 1991. Um, so I, I believe there's always been the theory that this is a way sister cities to actually be at peace mm -hmm. with our neighbors. Um, and that was also a face-to-face -face contact with the citizens of another country, mm -hmm. which I think that at least that's what the theory of sister cities are based on. And there are those of us who, those of us in Burlington who would argue that Burlington has no business getting involved in international affairs. I've always argued that it is the best way to get involved in international affairs because at bottom, if we're always at war that meet with other countries, that really does mean a big military budget, which if you have a big military budget, you don't have money for local mm -hmm. uh, projects. Mm -hmm. And so I've always argued that peace and war and friendship and cultural exchange are crucial mm -hmm. to building a city and to building really a peaceful and more beautiful world. Absolutely. So I congratulate you, Ali, on doing this, especially since it's the first sister city in Africa. Yes. We do have sister cities in the Middle East. We have sister cities in Europe. Mm -hmm. 
I think we used to have one in uh, Canada, didn't we? Yeah, still one. Probably still there. No, there's a project that's developing to have a, a sister city in Saint-Jean, Quebec. Mm -hmm. I know, Saint-Jean-de-Richelieu in Quebec, which I'm sort of a, pro a part of. And we had one in Moss Point, Mississippi, didn't mm -hmm. we? Mm -hmm. What happened to that one? Yep. But yep. anyway. <laughs> yes. And I, I would love to have a sister that city. Turner, I would like to have a sister city in Winooski, too. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. Sister cities, you know, a way to uh, improve our relationship with uh, the rest of the world. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, but you know, some sister cities are kind of you know uh, bringing trouble. In the, like in what? Like I mean, I mean, uh, we have a sister city in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. In Arad. Yep. In Arad. Arad. But you know, uh, uh, how That's can. My, the one that I helped to found, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, uh, how can a sister city not enjoy our support for, uh, for example, a ceasefire? Or, I mean, the sister city that is in the region that is at war? Well, uh, can I say something that I really believe? I think the biggest, with all due respect mm -hmm. to everybody here, the biggest, mis one of the biggest mistakes that the Democrats made in this last election was not signing on to a ceasefire, particularly since the ceasefire between Israel and uh, really the Palestinian people was so important for our sister city in Palestine. I think that the Democrats were kind of tune deaf about that. We have relations with one of the cities that is being oppressed and has been by the state of Israel since 1948. And we didn't really stick up for both our sister cities, Arad and Israel, and our sister city in Palestine to help make peace. That's what I thought it should do. And one of the first components of that would be to recognize that we should have a ceasefire in that war. Other, other cities are passing it, like in Rochester. Did you see that Rochester, New York, just passed a ceasefire resolution? Uh -huh. Yeah, multiple, multiple municipalities. Uh, even you in were Vermont. a sponsor of that too, weren't you? Yeah. And, could, and good for you. Yeah, twice. Um, and it was a shame because I think the tide turned at that point yeah. in the election. And congratulations to Emma Mulvaney Stanek for winning that election because she signed on to a ceasefire resolution in the legislature, right? It was not. It was more of a letter going yeah. to the White House, and she she signed. She it. signed it. Steve Goodkind wanted yeah. to. Uh, no, no, I, um, I just want to make sure. Are we on? Yeah, we're not yeah. showing up on that screen. Just yeah, to yeah, make we sure are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, donc, uh, Sassi, tu vas entrer en, en compte là maintenant. Hein? Donc, tu, uh, tu restes, en, tu, tu te prépares, on s'en va. OK, so OK. Sure we, we All right. see, Avance yes. un peu le buste, voilà. Voilà, ça va. Non, 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 pas venir, mais le buste. Ça dit, voilà, voilà, c'est bon, ça va. I, okay. one, one question, I didn't, never thought of it till just now, but... We're sister cities with, is it Arad, yes, Israel, and Israel. Bethlehem? Are they sister cities too? Well, they're supposed to be. Or were they okay. supposed to be part can, of the can, deal? Can I just comment on why <laughs> we did that? Yeah, I, I, I didn't even know if we were or not. I'm, no, okay, so at the time, there were many of us citizens who were always involved in this issue between Israel and Palestine. I was one of them. The pro initial proposal was that we only have a sister city in Bethlehem, Palestine. However, many people oppose that because they said, no, we should be even-handed and so forth. And I kind of agreed with that. So there was a proposal made on city council to have a tripartite arrangement. And so we did select a sister city in Arad. And that's fine, that was good. However, since the inception, Israel and Palestine have been at, uh, at war with each other. So Arad has sort of just dropped out of the picture. I would like to resume that relationship. Sure. Arad and but, Bethlehem weren't part, weren't sister yeah, cities, they or were, were they? They were trying to communicate. And then it just kind of fell apart. Over the course of the years, which, oh, but minute. remember the meeting that we were, I was at with you? Mm -hmm. And there was some suggestion from the, uh, I would some say the Shemitas. community yeah. that uh, objected to the ceasefire, that we resume that. That's a great idea, yeah. don't yeah. you think? I think it's a good idea. And I think also CCTV did host the sister city coordinator between Arad and yes, Bethlehem. Many right years here. ago. Yep. Mm -hmm. He did a, a show like a couple of weeks ago, like yes. right here. What's his name? In Essex. Musa, it's Musa not Issa. completely dead. Yeah, no. Which, no, it has been, but we all wanted always to revive it. Because there's nothing like speaking together. Oh, I'm, with I'm with you. Yeah, Burlington is becoming like a, a voice.
a like reason. for the international world. And then I see that trend across the nation. Cities are, you know, asserting the... You know why? Because mm. governments, national governments, are only making wars. Cities should make peace. Yeah. Yeah. All right, from, uh, <laughs> from uh, uh, Burlington, we uh, travel now uh, to Senegal. Correct. Uh, and then we cross the Atlantic Ocean to get in uh, Dakar, where uh, Basiru, um, Basiru Diomai is, you know, a remarkable ascent marks a culmination, the culmination of tumultuous, you know, period in the Senegalese politics. Senegal has a new president. We'll discover this new president uh, through this video before we come back here on the set and to discuss with our friend also who is joining us from the Ivory Coast, Dr. Sosten Dugrou, who is a uh, you know, political analyst and uh, he said he's a humanitarian diplomat. So let's go to Senegal. Here's the video. Basaru Diamai Fai turned 44 on Monday and for his birthday this year, news that he'd been elected Senegal's next president. Fai made his first public appearance on Monday evening after the ruling coalition's candidate, Amadou Ba, conceded defeat. Le peuple sénégalais a fait le choix de la rupture. The Senegalese people have chosen to break with the past, to give substance to the immense hopes raised by our vision of society. I hope that our vision of society has given substance to their aspirations. I pledge to govern with humility and transparency and to fight corruption at all levels. Fai thanked President Macky Sall and other candidates for respecting Senegal's democratic tradition by recognizing his victory well before official results. Provisional results had shown the opposition leader on 53.7% of the vote from Sunday's election, compared to Ba's 36.2%. Saal and Ba hailed the outcome as a win for Senegal. The country has witnessed three years of unprecedented political turbulence, marked by violent anti-government protests. Further unrest was triggered when Saal attempted to postpone the election by 10 months. We intend to turn this page, to reconcile hearts, to reconcile the Senegalese people. Fai was backed by popular opposition leader Usman Sonko. He had been barred from running in the election due to a defamation conviction he says was politically motivated, which the authorities denied. Fai and Sonko, who were recently released from prison under a pre-election amnesty law, are particularly popular among the youth, disaffected by economic hardships and unemployment. Fai promised to dedicate more state resources to help the younger population. His campaign has also vowed an economic shakeup, including a new currency and the renegotiation of energy and mining contracts. Investors have been wary about whether a new government would be less business friendly than Saul's administration. But on Monday, Fai promised that Senegal would remain a friendly country and a reliable ally to any partner who engages with us in virtuous, respectful and mutually productive cooperation. Voilà, we're here now, uh, you know, to comment on this fantastic, you know, it's an earthquake, Ali. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think um, this is unprecedented in the history of Senegal. For oh. the first time, uh, the youngest president elected in Senegal is just 44 years old. And he has never studied overseas. He has never held higher office in Senegal, like not mayor, no... Um, you know, state legislator. He was just uh, an, a tax inspector in Senegal and uh, a smart guy who did very well in school. Um, and, you know, he owns, uh, earns a master degree in, in law. And then he did the administration school in Senegal. And then he was hired in the ta as a task inspector in but Senegal. But it's, it's, it's frightening. We, we welcome now uh, uh, Sosten Dugrou. Sosten, uh, you joining us from Abidjan. Uh, Dr. Sosten Dugrou, uh, what are your comments, you know, uh, from this uh, uh, unprecedented election in, in, in Senegal? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. It's very strange, though. Okay. Uh, thank you very much and uh, good evening from Abidjan. And uh, before uh, sharing my comments, I want to recall one or three points regarding 
uh, Senegal in uh, West Africa. As you may know, uh, Senegal stands as a very important country in uh, the political and historical landscape uh, in West Africa, because during uh, the time of the slavery trade, Senegal and the highland of Gore is well known as the place where the slaves were gathered before departing to the US. So Senegal is a, a place that is well known. And secondly, Senegal was also during the colonial um, empire under France, Senegal was, and Dakar particularly, was the capital city of the Francophone West African countries, gathering Togo, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, Mali, and Burkina Faso. And uh, thirdly, during the Second World War, Senegal was also a place where many African soldiers were gathered and departed uh, to France and to Europe to fight uh, against the Nazism. So talking about Senegal is um, uh, a little bit very exciting. And what is happening today, as the president himself said, is marking a breakup. A breakup regarding the generation that is uh, now getting on power. The president, someone we call it uh, uh, recently, is very young. He's only 44 years. 44 years. So from the past uh, governing class, Macky Sall, uh, Abdul Diouf, and talking about uh, uh, Maitre Abulai Wad, and also the first president, now we are clearly seeing that there is a breakup of generation and something new is happening in Senegal. And secondly, um, the, 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 the very tight link between Senegal and France is now, will now posing some questions regarding the future of those relationships. Because for a long time, commencing by the founder of Senegal, President Leopold Sedar Senghor, he was very close to France. He was married to a French citizen and member of the French Academia, and also his successor, Dr. Uh, President Abdul Diouf, after his time on, uh, on office, has been appointed and is currently working as uh, the Secretary General of the International Organization of Francophonia. And the one who is now going to leave the office, Makisal. Makisal has also been appointed last year as a special envoy of uh, an initiative uh, held by France. So, Dr. so Dr. having to... It's not only, uh, you know, a change of, you know, uh, generation, like yes. clearly the system is changing. But it seems that, you know, yes. we're breaking away from, uh, from a past colonial, you know, uh, em second empire, I should say. Yeah, definitely, definitely. As I said, during the colonial time, Dakar was the epicenter of uh, the power of France in West Africa, in Francophone West Africa, particularly. Mm -hmm. And today, we are seeing that there's a kind of uh, trend to uh, now turning the page from France to a new era because the new elected president himself said that we are breaking up. We are on a breakup period. And commencing now, the upcoming days, we are going to see new change into the relation, diplomatic, the external policy of France, uh, of Senegal, sorry, against France, the policy of uh, Senegal against Cote d'Ivoire and other leading countries into the West African region. I think something very important is happening and we have to, to, to be careful to listen and, uh, and, and, to, and to look. So what you're saying, I think, and Ali, I ask you also, is there seems to be throughout West Africa a move again of decolonialization, really against France. Is that what's happening yeah. in a way? Yeah, against France, but also Ali, against I don't know. US but the, I mean, the U.S. is paying for yeah. its, you know, uh, 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 alliance with France. Yeah, exactly. You know, because right. the U.S. <laughs> is being seen. Yeah. Yes, no, I'm talking about the, 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 the past, the past history that we are sharing with France. And this history... Uh, well, now is, this history is being questioned by the new generation. Are we going to continue having the same relation with France as our father had, or are we going to change? 
because this generation is calling itself game changers. So we are going to see on the political arena the way the game is going to change. We have seen some uh, brutal change of regime in yes. Burkina Faso, in Niger, and other countries in Guinea that are marking the break. But these have been installed by some coup. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about yeah. the changing of generation through electoral process. Right. That's so true in Senegal. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah, in Senegal. And Senegal is now giving a very good example of how to transition from this former established relationship with France. And in this relationship was, uh, uh, was analyzed like very heavy. It was very heavy on our political environment, very heavy on our economic uh, programming, heavy on everything. So now, as I said, it's a new era that is happening not only for Senegal, but right. on also from West African Francophone right. countries. Like, like Niger? Like, like Niger. Like, like, but, you know, like Dr. Niger. Dugo, in Senegal, you know, the power over there was, you know, opposed to uh, this change. We saw the former, I mean, the... the, the uh, Macky Sall sending his uh, his opponents to jail. Is yeah. France going? Is France going to accept that change, which which is clearly, you know, uh, uh, is a threat to uh, the way they make money in Africa? Right. No, I, I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure because, as you, you know, Dakar is also the headquarter of our central bank of West African West African countries. So the influence that France had on our money, on our, our, our currency in West Africa, is going to play a good role in the future of this relation. But I'm not sure that this victory and this change will be easily accepted by France. I'm not sure. So wait and see. And we have to be very careful and cautious about the future of this new president. I was just going to ask you, what do you think? I mean, I think, yes, there is a change of perception about Africa, West Africa currently. I think there is also a new generation stepping up. And in some cases, it's by force. If you go mm. to Ivory Coast, mm -hmm. um, not Ivory Coast, but Burkina Faso, you Faso. go to Mali, Mali, you go to Guinea, right? They took it by coup. Right. But now in Senegal, it's just demonstrating that we still can have a peaceful transition through just the ballot box. And but, I think that's what... But what Ali, if, if the president, Macky Sall, was insisting in not letting the democratic you know, process go through, it would have been also war. Yes. I mean, and I think also that it speaks, again, volume to the health of the democracy of Senegal mm -hmm. because the institutions there are really secure and they are very strong. Macky Sall tried repeatedly mm -hmm. to push the elections until December 15, and then to push it again until June. But the Conseil Constitutional did say completely no, these elections will take place, and they did it. Very quickly, Jomai Fai, the current president himself, and also his uh, good friend, Usman Sonko, were both in prison. They were released 10 days just before the election, and they were released through an amnesty that Macky Sall have signed. Now, why uh, uh, Amadou Ba did not win, there are speculation because Macky Sall did not support him, and Amadouba was also the prime minister of Senegal, right? Right. I think also to the relationship with the friends, we have to be also very careful right. because I think from the perception of the France AFR, the monetary that we use, it has a strong tie with France, with also other countries such as yeah, the Ivory Coast, Coast right? Ivory so Coast. Let, let me just, before Ali continues, 14 or 15 countries in uh, Africa share the same, you know, the same currency that is brought by France yes. to them. So they cannot do anything else but, you know, uh, you know. Exactly. Uh, is it the French franc? It's yeah. Fra so, but yeah. an, an element. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. their own franc. France AFR. But, you know, that's yeah, tailored yeah. to just Africa. Right. It was called right. the, uh, the franc of the colony of Africa back in the days. And then because the name was not sexy, they changed it. CFA, just CFA. Mm -hmm. But France keeps uh, half at least of the... Uh, the reserve uh, uh, a currency, like if, for example, Senegal uh, 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 gets a deal with the U.S. and gets like one thousand uh, dollars, the dollars, like half of it, goes to Bank of France, and it's stored yeah. there, makes makes babies, 
and France, with this money, can uh, can loan money to uh, Senegal yep. or to, to to their own money, mm -hmm. and then this yeah. currency is not they cannot do anything with this currency, but you know use it in Africa. So the new generation, the yeah. new president of Senegal, yeah. is promising maybe to revisit this, you know, uh, uh, the France. <laughs> but, but that's, what I, but that's, that's my point. Do you think then that France is going to be so nice about this? I mean, I think they don't have a choice. Right, I good. think they are now called to the um, uh, negotiation table. Mm -hmm. And it's not only about the currency. It's also about the, a lot of contracts about mining, the exploration of gas that's there, of petrol in Senegal, that need to be revisited. And I think that's what this new generation yeah. of leaders are talking. But from my perspective, it will be imperative also, let's make the distinction between winning an election Mm -hmm. and also, mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, governing, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And I think he's new. There are a lot of speculation out there. I think we need to give him a benefit of a doubt for him to compose his strong government, right, and then for him to advance what they call the project. And then we will see from there. But for now, I think from as much as I'm, I'm interested, I think the United States need to have a strong presence in West Africa and I think we need we need to identify what are the ways. I'll re re rebound on that, but Steve, Steve. One, that's, I don't know that much about Senegal. I know where it is, but a lot of the countries that come from colonial times, the boundaries of those countries are often set, I'd say, arbitrarily. They were set arbitrarily. Culturally, yeah. ethnically, people are divided up, and many of these countries end up being unstable because they're not they're not in balance. Is Senegal more of a stable country, or does it have its own Insurgency. Dougou. He'll have to deal with. Yeah. Could you... So uh, we are talking about the stability, political stability of Senegal. Yeah. Just wondering if they, do they have it, are they a fairly stable country or do they have insurgencies that are somewhat related to the fact that the boundaries were drawn in a crazy way 50 years ago or 100 years ago by France? So I, I, think, I think Senegal is... Um, a case to study here, uh, uh, from my perspective, if you see a country that uh, accessed to the independence in the year 60s, Senegal was the first country where the president alive resigned and appointed his, uh, another one as a new president. So the first transition in Senegal was a very good transition. It was made peacefully without no gun, without nothing, without nothing in the country. So this was a very good example, except uh, the other country like Burkina Faso, the first school was in uh, 1966, in Benin in uh, 1967. In all of the countries, Francophone countries in, uh, in West Africa, there were coups before the year 70s. And Senegal is an exception. And as you see, uh, all the transition in Senegal has been made uh, peacefully, except this one, I can say, because uh, Macky Sall tried several times to postpone the election to make a constitutional coup. So for me, it is a very good example for us to, to, to copy and, uh, I, I, I mean, to spread out uh, across uh, West African countries the way uh, the transition has been conducted in, uh, in, in Senegal. So bringing the, 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 the story of Senegal to the, the U.S., you said the U.S. has to, you know, have a good presence in, in, in West Africa, but also a new way of doing business mm -hmm. in West mm -hmm. Africa, mm -hmm. not just being you know, a superpower which gets, gets there to give lessons, right? So I think the... Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I was, all I was going to say is that the United States, however, does not have a great history in West Africa or in Africa. Period, because it has AFRICOM. It has military bases all over Africa. That's how the United States has also related to Africa, is militarily, because it sees itself, I think, in competition with the Russians and the Chinese. Mm, right. And I think that Senegal, with all due respect, mm. I know Ali will, will <laughs> think about that past and wonder whether the United States is going to use this as a way to militarize. Um, Senegal as well. Yeah, I, I think I think United States and Senegal already have a military partnership, right. you know, through training and medical intervention, etc. 
But I think the geopolitical uh, aspects of what's going on in West Africa need to be highlighted, yes. which is yeah. there is a strong presence of the Chinese mm -hmm. now in Senegal. Over 32% of the goods that are being imported are now coming from China. Mm -hmm. We see the Russian are also currently in Burkina Faso. Right. They are also in Mali, mm -hmm. right? So the United States has to, you know, step up for his game in order to make sure that Senegal is a stable country, because that's the mm -hmm. only country right now with all the surrounding other countries, Mauritania, the wow. Gambia. They all had somewhat an element of a coup d'état in the past couple of years, '89, you know, and recently in the 2000s, right? But I think Senegal is still showing the way to be a very democratic um, country based on the constitution and the rule of law, right? And I think from my perspective, the United States love that, and the United States need to support the Senegal to deepen its tie also in the region. But you cannot well. support Senegal and, and, you know, do that and let the other countries, you know, face, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, big corporations that are there to wipe the resources, uh, uh, you know, France that is having a military base across mm. the region, the US. Uh, the US. Yep. I think this story has to be, <laughs> you know, followed, continued. you know, continued. Quickly, uh, lady and gentlemen, this week we had an, something that made news, which is and then perceived as a drift from, uh, you know, the original uh, uh, dogma, which is following Israel at any cost. Uh, the U.S., you know, uh, didn't object to a resolution at the U.N. in favor of ceasefire. Right. Finally. 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 Is it just a little drama between two allies or it will have consequences on the ground? I think we almost are out of time. Yeah. I think it's a continuing story, first of all. Mm -hmm. I think that the United States did something that the Biden administration has to to do if it's going to win, and that is to propose a ceasefire. Will the United States do that really in the end? Does it support a ceasefire? This is what it doesn't do. It does not enforce any kind of stop to sending arms and money to a state of Israel. That's, what's co that's the crucial thing. Will it do that? I guess no. Steve Goodkind, so it might be just, uh, how do you say it, uh, a storm in, a in, a in the teapot? It, it probably is, you know, it probably has some import. Yeah, the some. The trouble is, some. you get two sides, and I don't think either one of them is going to abide by the ceasefire. Mm -hmm. Neither one wants to. That's yeah. the problem. No, no, it isn't no. like one does and one doesn't. Yeah, but Steve I don't think and either I have a do. deep dis disagreement. But that's why about this, this, uh, this okay, set right. is forward. This, this is my this disagreement is with him, yeah. is that the Palestinian people are being massacred. That's what has to stop, and that has to stop immediately. There are no two sides to that. There, it has to stop, okay? You, will the United States make it stop? I would guess not, because it will continue to weaponize Israel. It, the United States, it's up to us as Americans to say that weapon exchange or not exchange has to stop. Yeah. But uh, the U.S., you know, still saying that we need to uproot Hamas. I'm telling you what I believe. That massacre has to stop. You're asking a different question. Will it? Will the United States make Israel stop? Will the United States stop sending weapons to Israel? I'm saying my guess is no. However, it's a continuing story. Uh, Dugu, we'll finish with you and then uh, we'll close that uh, wonderful discussion. Yeah. Uh, from, from Africa, we are opposing this decision of the, the United States with two ends. And but we are applauding from my, two ends in my, Africa. We are applauding, yes. So from, from my diplomatic background, I know that uh, the UN resolution are not binding. And uh, the, the United States is the only country that can stop Israel. Okay. If nothing is done, the United Nations has, they have no means they have no military means, they have no political means to stop Israel. Only the United States can do that. So they have to do that. Right. This Thank is my you. last word. That's my opinion. All also. right, folks, should we uh, close yes. by this? <laughs> yes. Thank, All right. you. This thank you. Uh, thank you, Ali. Thank, thank you, Ali. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, uh, Susten. That was the first, you know, edition of our of the new Voices, project, of, the Voices Vermont. of Vermont. Yeah. We hope to uh, continue to bring, you know, uh, issues 
and see much disagreements on the set. <laughs> thank you to all of you. <laughs> thank you, thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.